Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. Well, this is actually the big stick. I'm here at the Fraser History Museum in Louisville, Kentucky, and one of the amazing things that they have in the Founders Gallery in their collection is Teddy Roosevelt's Holland & Holland rifle from his 1909 African Safari. Theodore Roosevelt is recognized as not only one of the great figures in American and world history, but as one of the foremost conservationists of wildlife and natural habitats in history. Roosevelt was also a statesman, naturalist, author, explorer, soldier, rancher, and hunter. His experiences as a sportsman and outdoorsman were of considerable importance in the development of his philosophy of independence and individualism. Theodore owned many guns in his lifetime, but the Holland & Holland Royal Double Rifle, serial number 19109, chambered in 50 was the finest firearm he ever owned. It has become known as the Big Stick, as a reference to his quote on diplomacy. A quick note on the ammo designation. 50 means that a 3 and a quarter inch 500 Nitro Express cartridge was necked down to hold a smaller 450 caliber bullet. In Roosevelt's gun, the 480 grain bullet would be traveling at about 2,000 feet per second with approximately 5,000 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Plans for creating the rifle began in 1908 at the behest of Edward North Buxton, a personal friend of Roosevelt and a well-known hunter, together with a group of more than 50 other outstanding British conservationists and hunting enthusiasts. On August 8, 1908, Roosevelt sent a letter, on White House stationery no less, describing the specifics he wanted for the gun. The length of pull was to be 14 and 3 8 inches to the front trigger, with a drop at the heel of 2 and a half inches. The barrels were to be 26 inches in length, and the overall length of the gun was to be 42 and 3 quarters inches. The trigger weight was set at 3 and a half pounds. The rear sight was made to spec from a drawing Roosevelt made on that same White House stationery, and it matches up with two folding leaf sights and one fixed sight at 100 yards with an elongated gold front bead sight. The fixed 100-yard blade was test-fired with a 50 load using 70 grains of cordite behind a 480-grain bullet in a 3 and a quarter inch casing. The results were a group no larger than 2 and 1 8 inches by 1 and a half inches. The load data is found on a label inside the case as well as engraved on the underside of the gun's receiver. The gun also bears an elongated top strap that extends halfway down the length of the stock, which was a way to strengthen the wrist against the substantial recoil of the 500 450. This was done as a special request from Roosevelt. All told, the final cost was 85 pounds, 13 shillings, 6 pence. At that time, that was equivalent to about eight and a half months' salary of a skilled tradesman. Adjusting for inflation, that's about 10,500 pounds or $12,600 today. Still an absolute steal considering that these guns would start at about 165,000 pounds if you were to order one today. In January 1909, Roosevelt had the first opportunity to test the new double rifle, and he recorded his thoughts. At last, I was able to get a day off and try the double-barreled 450. It is a perfect beauty. The workmanship is like that of a watch. Of course, our rifles look coarse and cheap and clumsy beside it. I cannot say how delighted I am with it. His safari began when the party boarded a steamer loaded with all of their supplies, on March 23, 1909, just 19 days after he left the presidency. Over the course of 10 months, Roosevelt's party harvested 469 big game animals, 262 of which were used to feed the hunting party and 150 others who were vital in the safari's success. Many of the others were brought back as museum specimens for the Smithsonian, which was underwriting much of the safari's $75,000 cost. Now, the Holland & Holland double rifle was by no means the only weapon that Roosevelt selected for the trip. In his arsenal were a Fox 12-gauge shotgun, two Winchester Model 1895 lever-action rifles chambered in 405 Winchester, which he called Big Medicine, 
a Springfield in 30 6 as well as a Manlicker rifle. A double rifle was obviously of prime significance to Theodore and to the other safari participants, as reflected by the frequent references to it in his book, African Game Trails. The gun's first test was on a rhinoceros, of which he would eventually kill 13. I pushed forward the safety of the double-barreled Holland rifle, which I was now to use for the first time on Big Game. The rhino saw me, and as he rose, I put in the right barrel. Before he could get quite all the way around in his headlong rush to us, I struck him with my left-hand barrel. Plowing up the ground with horn and feet, the great bull rhino, still head toward us, dropped just 13 paces from where we stood. He goes on to note that, for heavy game like rhinoceroses and buffaloes, I found that for me personally, the heavy Holland was unquestionably the proper weapon. The rifle was also well suited for elephant, of which he personally shot eight. As I aimed at his head, he started to move off. The first bullet from the heavy Holland brought him to his knees, and as he rose, I knocked him flat with the second. Roosevelt's son Kermit noted that the recoil of the big gun was so severe that it became a standing joke as to whether we did not fear it more than a charging elephant. The big stick itself is in extraordinary condition, considering it was used on such a long African safari and it is now more than 110 years old. The finish is fairly well intact. The engraving and checkering are still sharp. Furthermore, the original case and accessories are present, the case being of oak and leather and containing the original presentation label in the lid, listing each and every one of the 56 distinguished donors. In preparation for a safari in 1986, the rifle was sent back to Holland and Holland to have some work done on the then almost 80-year-old rifle. At that time, the company remarked that, We are in full agreement that this gun is a major mechanical, artistic, and romantic artifact of American, British, and African culture. It was during this time back at Holland and Holland that the fore-end, which was lost by the Roosevelt family sometime in the 1940s, was replaced in the same style as the original. It's also likely that the orange butt pad and engraved stock medallion featuring the presidential eagle, TR initials, and 1909 date were added at this time, as those elements of the rifle are not visible in any of the photos or moving footage from the original safari. With the work completed, the gun set off on this new safari, whose participants included Theodore Roosevelt IV and Theodore Roosevelt V the smaller of the two children and the one in the blue shirt in this clip. Also along for the adventure are two names that are well known in the gun collector world. Greg Martin, who arranged for the gun to make the trip on the safari, on the left, and Larry Wilson, in the middle. Over the years, the gun has been owned by some other famous people, though none quite as famous as President Roosevelt. Richard P. Mellon, whose surname needs no introduction, and William E. Simon, former Treasury Secretary, were just two of the gun's high-profile owners. In 1994, the gun was sold at auction for $500,000 before the buyer's premium, before eventually being sold again and purchased by philanthropist Owsley Brown Frazier. It has been on display at the Library of Congress and at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the gun is now part of the permanent collection at the Frazier History Museum in Louisville, Kentucky, which was founded by Mr. Frazier in 2004. I highly encourage you to visit the museum if you're in the area, and if you'd like to support their mission while also getting to shoot guns and sample bourbon cocktails and craft beers, after the shooting is done, obviously, then you should check out the Frazier Classic, which is being held in September 2022. It's a Sporting Clays fundraiser that will help fund the museum's educational programs, workshops, family days, hometown history exhibits, gallery presentations, unique plays, and live storytelling. There will be a link to the event in the description below. Few politicians' personas are as intertwined with firearms as that of Theodore Roosevelt, and there's no firearm more fitting for that connection than the Holland & Holland Royal Double Rifle, known as the Big Stick. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and share this with someone you know who you think is a fan of TR and or fine guns. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.